What is the church? In defining the meaning of the church, one has to first look at the Greek word used for it in the New Testament. The word for this is ekklesia and is defined to mean a called out assembly. The English word ecclesiastical comes from this Greek word. The term ecclesia can be used of Israel in the Old Testament according to Acts 7.38, but is more frequently used in the New Testament for the church in two primary ways. Vine's Expository Dictionary points this out when saying the word ecclesia for the church has two applications to companies of Christians. A to the whole company of the redeemed throughout the present era, the company of which Christ said, I will build my church, and which is further described as the church, his body. B, it can refer to a company of professed believers, and in the plural, with reference to churches in a district. The church, then, is a called out body of believers in Jesus Christ that compose both saved Jews and Gentiles taken out from the nations of the world from the day of Pentecost in Acts 2 until the rapture, which will conclude and finish up the present church age. Biblically speaking, the church is not a building or a denomination, but all the body of true born-again believers. All those who have placed their trust in Jesus Christ for salvation are members of the true church, a spiritual temple not a physical building. This is highlighted by what Paul says in Romans 16:5. Greet the church that is in their house. Notice Paul refers to the church in their house, not to a church building, but a company of believers meeting in that house. The two aspects of the church are the visible church and the invisible church. The visible church is seen with a physical assembly of presumed Christians gathering in churches around the world. The visible church has a mixture of true and false Christians, the wheat with the tares of Matthew 13. The invisible church are comprised of only true born-again believers which are known to God spanning from the birth of the church in Acts chapter 2 until the rapture. The visible church is what we see now a mixture of both believers and unbelievers. The invisible church are true Christians in the present age, dead and living whom Christ will come for in the air at the rapture. There is also the local church where believers meet in a certain geographical location. Paul speaks of the churches in Galatia, an example of the local church, Galatians 1, 1 and 2. There is the one universal church in which all true believers saved by Jesus Christ make up the one community gathered out from every tribe, kindred, tongue, and nation of the world. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, Galatians 3, 28, and Ephesians 1, 22, and 23. The universal church is not under a banner of one denomination, but comprises all born-again Christians from various denominational backgrounds that exist within the pale of biblical orthodoxy. The founder of the church is Jesus Christ alone. He is the builder of the church as stated in Matthew 16, 18. Jesus said there, I will build my church. As the founder, Jesus Christ is also the head of the church, its life and author, Colossians 1, 18, Ephesians 5, 23. The foundation the church is built upon is Jesus Christ and who he is, the Messiah, the Son of the living God, just as Peter confessed and Jesus affirmed in Matthew 16, 16 and 17. Peter reiterated this in 1 Peter 2, 4 through 6, pointing out that Jesus Christ himself is the cornerstone, and all believers like Peter are little stones being built up a spiritual house, which is the church standing on the foundation of Jesus Christ. As it is written, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ, and that rock was Christ, 1 Corinthians 3.11 and 10.4. The function of the church is to obey the great commission Christ gave them, to preach the gospel, baptize new believers, and make disciples of all nations for Jesus Christ during the present age, Matthew 28.16-20, 20, 
Acts 1.8. Another function of the church is to train and equip fellow believers for the ministry of evangelism and discipleship. We learn this from Ephesians 4.12. The Word of God is to be taught in the church and proclaimed to strengthen one's Christian faith, 2 Timothy 4.2. The church is to be a place where believers can praise God, pray for one another through the name of Jesus Christ, and edify each other in the faith, 1 Thessalonians 5.11. The church is the place of fellowship where believers can observe the Lord's Supper, in which the saving death and shed blood of Jesus Christ for our salvation are remembered. New Testament metaphors to illustrate the reality of the church are the spiritual bride of Christ, the body of Christ, a spiritual temple or house of God, and the family of God. The completion of the church will occur at the rapture when the Lord Jesus Christ takes his spiritual bride to his Father's house in heaven, according to John 14, 1-5. The church will then return to earth with Christ immediately after the seven-year tribulation to rule and reign with him on the earth in the millennial kingdom to come, Revelation 19.